Okay, so we had been talking about mass number and atomic number last week. The mass number is not the same as atomic mass. Uh, the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons, um, which is similar. It's close to the mass of an atom, but it's not the same. Now, an individual atom is not only far too small to see, but we also, there's no way you could weigh a single atom. So how can we figure out how much an atom weighs? Well, we can measure, excuse me, we can measure their relative mass. So even though they're too small to weigh, we can, through other experiments, determine, well, this, this atom weighs twice as much as this other atom. We can do things like that even though they're too small to see. So what we did is um, we assigned a value to the mass of one atom. We picked something. Scientists picked something. They picked carbon-12 because carbon is very stable. It's cheap. It's easy to get. And they picked carbon-12 because that's the most common isotope of carbon. So they said, we're going to say that one atom of carbon-12 weighs 12. 12 what? You need a unit, right? So we made up a unit. We called it an atomic mass unit. Not very creative, but descriptive. It's a mass unit for atoms. So they said one carbon-12 atom weighs 12 atomic mass units. So the atomic mass is the mass of one atom in atomic mass units. So one carbon-12 atom weighs 12. And atomic mass units are abbreviated AMU. So atomic mass unit is it's not an AMU, which might be a relative of an EMU. It's AMU. So one atomic mass unit is a mass equal to 1 12th the mass of one carbon-12 atom. So this all started with saying a carbon-12 atom weighs 12 atomic mass units. Therefore, the atomic mass unit must be 1 12th of that mass. And then experiments show that a hydrogen atom, the regular hydrogen isotope, hydrogen 1, is 8.3985% as heavy, as massive as carbon 12. So then you can just do a little math. You take this percentage, divide by 100 to get the fraction multiply by 12 atomic mass units, and you come up with 1.0078 atomic mass units. This is the mass, the atomic mass, of one hydrogen atom. Any questions? Now, most naturally occurring elements have more than one isotope. If you're dealing with a sample of, you know, a couple of grams of a substance, small enough to, to see, I mean large enough to see, um, you're going to have gazillions of atoms. You're going to have a mixture of all the naturally occurring isotopes. So what is the most useful is not the mass of a specific isotope, but the mass, the average mass of all the isotopes in that sample. So we usually use the naturally occur average mass of the naturally occurring mixture of, that should be isotopes. Bless you. Typo. All of the atomic masses that are listed on the periodic table are average atomic masses. Well, there's different ways to do an average. The one that you're probably most familiar with is you take um, the things that you're trying to average, you add them all up, and you divide by the number of things that there were. Like if you're trying to get your average score on three exams, you take the three exam scores, add them together, and divide the total by three. That gives you the average. That's called a simple average. A simple average isn't very useful <laughs> for, for, for dealing with atoms because they're too small to weigh and they're too small to count directly. So we use what's called a weighted average. A weighted average 
takes into account that we have lots of different things and we don't have an equal number of the different kind. So you take a weighted average by multiplying the percentage of the object expressed as a fraction by its mass for each object and then adding the numbers together. So we don't have to divide by anything at the end. Any questions? Um, so for different isotopes, we have what's called a percent natural abundance. And that's the relative amount found in a sample. This slide looks like it's, oh, there was an animation there. I didn't put that in, but there it is. Okay. So here's the example. This is a neon sign. Um, and this orange color here is actually from the element neon. If you put it in a tube and you pass electricity through it, it makes this neon orange color. That's where the name neon sign comes from. So if we look at the neon in this sign, um, we, f we see that 90.48% of those atoms are the neon 20. And only 9.25% are neon 22 and only 0.27% are neon 21. There's not an equal number of each of the isotopes. So we can't just take the masses, atomic masses of each isotope, add them together and divide by three. Because most of it is this neon 20. So the average then is going to be closer to the mass of neon 20 than it is to the other ones, because there's just a lot more of it. So let's think about copper, because it only has two isotopes. Copper has two isotopes. There's copper 63 and copper 65. So copper 63 has an atomic mass of 62.930 atomic mass units. The atomic mass is going to be very close to the mass number, but it's not exactly the same. So here's its atomic mass. And 69.09% of copper is copper 63. The other isotope is co copper 65. Its mass is 64.928 atomic mass units. The rest of it is that, 30.91%. So to find the weighted average, we take this 69.09%. We divide by 100, so that gives us 0 0.6909. And we multiply by the mass of that isotope. And then you take the other percentage expressed as a fraction, 0 0.3091, you multiply by the atomic mass of that isotope, and you add these together, and you get 63.55. The average atomic mass of copper is 63.55 atomic mass units. But there are no copper atoms that actually weigh 63.55 atomic mass units. Some are heavier and some are lighter, but there's none that are the average. Does that make sense? And we talk about, oh, that's not normal. What is normal, right? Is any one person normal? Probably not. We're all odd in some way or another. Normal is just this sort of nebulous average we have of behavior. And so we say, well, this is normal. But no one person is normal. This is the average mass of copper atoms but there's not actually one that's an average, that is that average mass. So think about family size, right? They say, well, the average family size in the United States is 2.1 children. Does any family have 2.1 children? How can you have a tenth of a child? What? It's the average. If you took families with two children and three children, 
and there were more that had two children, you could come up with an average of 2.1, even though no family has 2.1 children. Does that make sense? So we need to be able to do some calculations with this. And of course, I left my calculator in my office. Fabulous. OK, so here's a sample problem from your textbook. Oxygen is the most abundant element in both the Earth's crust and in the human body. The atomic masses of its three stable isotopes, oxygen 16, oxygen 17, and oxygen 18, are given. Um, calculate the average atomic mass of oxygen. And it says, report the result to four significant figures. Doing sig figs with these types of calculations gets a little messy at times, and we really don't care that much when we do these sorts of problems. So it's just saying, give it four sig figs at the end. Well, how do we do this? We've got percent abundances. 99.767% is oxygen 16. That tells me that almost all of them are oxygen 16, right? And there's a few that are oxygen 17, a few that are oxygen 18. I'm expecting this average to come out to be close to the oxygen 16. But we need to take this percentage, express it as a fraction, divide it by 100. So dividing that by 100, I get 0.99. 767. And I'm going to multiply that by the mass of that particular isotope, which is, they're given in order here. It's 15.9949 atomic mass units. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to take this next percentage, and again, I'm dividing by 100. So sometimes students mess up when they're dividing by 100. Do it on your calculator. Make sure you get it correct. This one should be 0 0.00038. That's a really small number. Times the mass of that one, which is 16.991 atomic mass units. And then I'm going to take the percentage expressed as a fraction for the third one, so 0 